guys you know what i hate my lip color and i'm changing it <laughs> it might be better um, i'm not sure hello 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 how are you guys i'm like fully aware that it is spring of 2021 but technically i still have books from 2020 that i just like haven't finished wrapping up and the completionist in me is just not okay with that so today i'm just gonna do like rapid fire book reviews i am going to try to wrap up every book that i'm missing and just do it as fast as possible because there's a lot of them and it's like at this point we don't have time to do full scale reviews for all of these i do still want to do a full series wrap up of all the book series that i read in 2020 but other than that this is going to cover all the books that i read in 2020 that i have not yet talked about so let's just get into it. First up we have Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the first book in the Dreamer trilogy which is like a continuation of the Raven Cycle. This is one of my most anticipated books of the year. I love the Raven Cycle but I did not like this book. It disappointed me. I gave it two stars. To be honest if I had just picked this book up and I didn't have the background of the Raven Cycle to keep me going, I would have DNF'd this. I wanted to DNF it so bad. It was just boring to me. I didn't like it. It was slow and uninteresting and I just didn't connect to it. Ronan is my favorite character from the Raven Cycle. He's one of my favorite characters of all time. So honestly, I will continue to read this series because the idea of not reading a book about this character that I love so much pains me but I just don't know I, I cannot believe that it just didn't work for me but it didn't next up we have Tuesday Mooney talks to ghosts by Kate Reculia this is a book that had so many elements that were very up my alley so I was really looking forward to it and I did like it but I feel like it didn't really pull everything off in the way that I wanted it to so I feel like it was a little bit of a disappointment I just wanted it to be so much more than it was it's about this like rich old man who dies and he leaves behind a treasure hunt for people to basically solve all these clues and win his fortune and our main characters attempt to do that so it was really fun I'm so into that concept I did like it but I feel like it had the makings of a book that I could have absolutely loved and there were just some things that fell flat but I gave it 3.5 stars. I would recommend. Next up we have The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. So this is a book that I had never read before but I love Sylvia Plath's poetry and I did love the writing in this book. Like her writing is incredible. I just absolutely loved that about this book. Of course need to acknowledge that there are a lot of just offhand racist comments in this book and it really just takes you out of it and sucks. Like, it's just bad. There's really no excuse for that. It is a huge detractor of this book for sure and of Sylvia Plath's writing in general. But admittedly, I still really loved this. Like, the story is about a woman who is experiencing depression and the depiction of mental illness I found to be poignant and gut-punching and there were some incredible things in this book about that topic. So the book itself, the main bulk of it, I loved. I gave this four stars but it would have been so much better if it didn't have those comments. Next up we have The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This is the prequel to The Hunger Games about President Snow. This was like such a huge release and then I feel like nobody really talked about it after it came out. The Hunger Games to me is like an incredible series. It holds up all the books for me are like five out of five stars, like one of the best series I've ever read. I love The Hunger Games. I think it's amazing dystopian. This book was not as good as The Hunger Games by any means. I gave it 3.5 stars, but I liked it. Like there was some interesting stuff. Some things I liked, some things I didn't. For what it was, I thought it was a good book, but does not hold a candle to the actual Hunger Games series. Is pretty much how I felt about that one. Next up we have Brown Girl Ghosted by Minty Doss. This is a book that from the cover I was so hyped to read. This book has bad reviews on Goodreads. I truly was like, you know what, I think this is going to be one of those books that has a bunch of controversial opinions about it and a lot of people hate it, but I think I'm going to end up loving it. I didn't really. Um, I have to agree with a lot of the negative reviews of this book. This book was just a mess. It was not horrible. Like there were some things that I liked, but it was 
it was just messy. It was so messy. That's the only way I can describe it. Some of the statements about like feminism and sexuality, I feel like felt so dated, even though this is a newer release. The plot of this book and the way that it was written was just bizarre. Like there was so much going on. It was so weird. It was just way too much was happening. It says here in my notes, I gave it 2.5 stars. So maybe it was not as bad as all that. I don't think it was the worst thing ever by any means. It just was messy. That's really all I have to say about it. <laughs> Moving on to one of my favorite books of the year, we have Red Hood by Alana K. Arnold. How do I even describe this book? It kind of takes like the idea of men as sexual predators and it kind of adds this like fantasy element where these men become like literal wolves and our main character kind of reveals a bunch of stuff about her past and her lineage and the relationship that they have with these mythical wolf creatures. This is definitely like a very like feminist leaning book and I really really loved the way all of those topics were dug into. This was weird and magical and creepy and gritty and I just loved it. I just sat and listened to the audiobook and I never got bored. Like I never wanted to do anything else. All I wanted to do was read this book. I loved it. Um, I gave this 4.5 out of 5 stars. I thought it was very good. It's written in the second person, which is a little weird, but I kind of was into it. There is like some sexually explicit content in this book, which is a little like to be reading as it's narrated in the second person from the perspective of a teenager. But that's also coming from me as an adult reader and this is, you know, technically YA. I don't think that was necessarily like a bad or wrong choice, but it was just kind of weird for me. Next up we have A Breath Too Late by Rocky Callan. This is... A sad one, extremely depressing book, um, definitely heavy, heavy content warning on this book for domestic abuse and suicide. Basically our main character has died by suicide before the book starts and then we follow her in the afterlife and she's kind of putting together the pieces of like what led up to this and watching her family and friends like deal with the aftermath of her death. So it's like depressing. It is very sad. Like I, I feel like I probably just cry throughout the entire book. I feel like I understood the intentions behind this book, but there was a part of me that felt like maybe the intentions that the author was going for weren't fully realized. I would say if you like depressing YA contemporaries, maybe give this a go. I gave it 3.5 stars. But yeah, big trigger warnings on that book. Next up we have Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. This is the first book in a series, but I will not be reviewing it as a full series because I do not intend to continue with this series. I hated this. <laughs> I gave this 1.5 stars. How do I describe this? Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell has like a fictionalized version of Harry Potter in it, and then this is like that story. So I was a little excited for this, but I just thought that the world building in this was atrocious. It was so bad. Magic system made no sense. The world made no sense. Like the, the different species of creatures that were living together and like the way that they existed, their powers and abilities, nothing about this felt real. It felt paper thin and not just like thin bad world building, but like laughable world building where I was like reading things and I was like, I can't take this seriously. This is ridiculous. This is like an enemies to lovers romance. And the, I thought that the romance was horribly developed. Like I felt nothing between these two characters, the like build of their relationship, garbage. I hated it. Like it was, it was not good. Okay, time for some whiplash. We've got one of my favorite books of the year, The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This was so good. I loved The Mothers. I've been waiting for Britt Bennett to come out with a new book and this was, this was even better than The Mothers. It was so good. This is a pretty buzzy book. You probably know it. Follows twin sisters. They're both black women with very light skin. So when they grow up, one of them decides to pass as white. She marries a white man and lives her life as a white woman. And then it also follows the timeline of their children. So one of them has a daughter who 
for all intents and purposes is white and the other one has a daughter who has very dark skin. It's a multi-generational story about their families and like the different branches and just where they end up. This really solidified for me that I love multi-generational stories. The different things that the characters go through, it just was so, so good, so detailed and layered and incredible and I just loved it. I gave this 4.5 stars. My main issue with this was that at the beginning of the book I had a lot of trouble remembering which sister was which and I felt very confused for the first chunk of this book, which frustrated me. Once I got a handle on the story, that went away. Um, I feel like if I were to reread this, I wouldn't really have that confusion. And I feel like this maybe could be a five-star book. I highly recommend. Next up we have This Town Sleeps by Dennis E. Staples. I really don't have much to say about this book. I mean, I liked the representation in this and I have no like qualms about this book. I just never really got hooked or fell in love with this. I just thought it was okay all the way through. It takes place in Minnesota, which is where I'm from, which I liked. Um, the main character is indigenous and the author is as well. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that the main character and the author are also both gay. So it was own voices representation. And I appreciated that a lot. I don't know, three stars, it was fine. Next up we have Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. So this is a very popular Australian thriller about rich mothers of like preschoolers and the conflict that happens and the big little lies that they have in this little town. I don't know. Um, I, I didn't love this. I think I went into it like thinking it would be a thriller. I didn't really think this was a thriller. Nothing about it was thrilling to me at all. It was just kind of boring. There was a little bit of a mystery, but not really. There was a little bit of like a reveal at the end, but not really. Mostly, I just didn't really love these characters. Like they were just really shallow people. And at times that was like fun and entertaining and like the gossip and the weird preschool politics. I could see how maybe that would be fun to read. It just wasn't really my thing. Um, I gave this 2.5 stars. I didn't hate it. There were some things that kept me going, but I just didn't think it was that great. It was a little bit of a letdown. That's that. Next up we have another thriller actually. This is I Know You Remember by Jennifer Donaldson. And this is a YA thriller about a girl who goes back to her like Alaskan hometown and is dealing with a lot of things from her past coming up. She's trying to find her former best friend who has gone missing. This is a book that I have very conflicting feelings about. I loved it almost all the way through. I thought the writing was great. I thought the characters were super interesting. The mystery was really getting me intrigued. I thought it was so good. This book deals a lot with like trauma and the characters had a lot of discussions about that. I just, I found it really fascinating. I thought it was really well written. I loved it. I was so excited to finally have a thriller that I loved because like it was really gripping. I was really into all the scary elements. I thought it was super, super good. And then we got to the end and the way everything was revealed, the explanation of what was going on, <laughs> I hated, I hated it so much. And it just kind of ruined the book for me. It made everything that I loved about the book kind of feel cheap almost. So I had really mixed feelings about it. I really didn't know how to rate this. I landed on three stars because I have a bad taste in my mouth coming away from it, but I have to acknowledge that I did love it almost all the way through. So maybe give this one a go. I don't know your tastes. I really couldn't tell you. I hated the ending, but maybe you will like it. Next up, we have a reread of one of my favorite books, And We Stay by Jenny Hubbard. I've read this book three times now, and I don't, I don't know. I was just in the mood to reread it, so I just checked it out from my library and I listened to the audiobook and lo and behold I still love this book just as much as I always have in the past. Is it a contemporary? It takes place in the 90s so honestly I guess we can call this historical fiction. <laughs> it's about a girl who has experienced something very traumatic. She's trying to get over it. She goes to like this boarding school. Emily Dickinson is a big theme throughout it. She writes poetry. Everything about this book works for me. I love it to pieces. 
five out of five stars. It's one of my favorites. Next up we have I Am The Messenger by Marcus Susak. This is another one I have really conflicting thoughts about. Um, I read this book when I was very young and I remember loving this book. Like I just remember when I finished it as a kid, I, it blew my mind. I thought it was incredible. It was one of my favorite things I'd ever read. I loved it. And I reread it and it just, I had some issues with it. Me at age, I don't know, 13 or whatever, I probably would have given this five out of five stars and been like, this is one of the best books I've ever read in my life. Me as an adult, three out of five stars. I had some issues with some of the content in this book, especially in regards to women. There were some like sexual assault plot lines that were weirdly dealt with. The main character of this book is like in love with his female best friend and just like will not shut up about how much he wants to date her even though she's not interested in him. I really didn't like the way he talked about her all the time. It really bothered me and just grated at me. But there are elements about this book that I did like and like there is something like very touching and wholesome about this story. I understand like why that really got me when I was a kid because like there are some things in this book that like feel really monumental and feel really meaningful like to a young reader. This book is also I think written almost in like free verse which I didn't realize because I was listening to the audiobook and I think that I maybe would have enjoyed this more if I could have seen like the line breaks and like the the way that this played with form because I didn't really pick up on that when I was reading the audiobook. I only realized it after I finished it. What is this about? It's about a guy who is basically sent these messages in the mail and he kind of has to like do all of these tasks for this unknown person who's like sent him on like this huge quest. Sometimes it's like big things and sometimes it's just like little things and it's basically about him connecting with his community and becoming a better person. There are a lot of touching moments in this book. Next up, we have Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. Nina LaCour is one of my favorite authors. So obviously we have another highly anticipated book of the year for me. This is basically about a girl who has aged out of the foster system and starts working on a farm and is going back and dealing with all the things in her past that she needs to deal with. I see a lot of people talking about this book as a ghost story. I don't go into it thinking this is like a supernatural book about ghosts because it's not. I really liked this. I gave it four out of five stars, but honestly I would like to reread it and I might like it better the second time around. The writing of course was incredible. Nina LaCour is just a phenomenal writer. And this book is just like very quiet and unassuming. It's very delicate. Like it, this book more than anything is just about a bunch of people dealing with trauma. I would like to link a review of this book from Dana and she loved it and talked about it on her channel in a way that made me appreciate it a lot more. And, and I really want to reread it because I, I, after watching her review, I feel like I, understand this book even better and I feel like I'll like it even more on reread. Would recommend her video, would recommend this book, would recommend Nina LaCour in general. I really liked this. Next up we have I Killed Zoe Spanos by Kit Frick. This is a I guess new adult. It's sort of mystery thriller. I loved this. This worked really well for me. Um, I was very very pleased by pretty much everything about this book. We have our main character who's like spending the summer as a nanny in the Hamptons and there's a, a missing girl who looks just like her and people keep pointing it out and so she kind of becomes like obsessed with this missing girl. There's a podcast about her and like the podcast is woven into the book as well, especially the audiobook like does the podcast and there's different uh, perspectives and different narrators for all the different characters. I really liked the mystery. It kept me so so intrigued. I could f see all the pieces and like almost put them together but I wasn't totally sure about everything until it got to the end. I do feel like there could have been a little bit more of a punch to the ending but I was not mad at the way things wrapped up. I would much prefer a book that had a slightly anticlimactic ending versus a book that throws something into the mix that is just 
unbelievably ridiculous and like ruins the book. It was satisfying enough and the journey was so worth it. I thought the writing was like surprisingly good. It just really, really stood out to me like certain turns of phrases and descriptions. It really worked for me. Um, I gave this four out of five stars would recommend. Next up we have The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. This is an extremely popular book. I think this won the Goodreads choice for fiction. This was clearly very popular. I hated this. I thought this book was awful. It is about this girl who dies by suicide and she ends up in this library and she basically like gets to go back and like redo her life so she'll she gets to choose like i want to go and 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 restart a life where you did this as my profession and then she gets to go and experience that and then if she wants to stay in that life she can otherwise she can come back and try out a different one for all intents and purposes it's basically like a series of short stories because all the different lives that she tries out are just completely like self-contained and that was something I didn't like about this. There really was no plot arc. The only thing that's consistent is the main character and to me her growth was not enough to keep this book afloat. From the very beginning I immediately guessed exactly how the entire book would play out down to the ending, everything about it, like it was incredibly obvious. I was correct. Everything happened the way that I thought it would. I really had to force myself to read it. I read this for a book club and that's truly the only reason like I pushed through. I just thought this book was like so sickeningly cliche, saccharine, and disgustingly hallmark. Am I just that jaded that everybody reads this book and like finds it to be touching and like emotionally moving? To me, it was the most cheesy, schlocky piece of garbage I've read in a long time. I give this, I think, 1.5 stars. Couldn't recommend it, but it is popular with so many people. Can't relate. I cannot relate. And the last book that we're going to talk about, we're finally through it, is Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. It is about a girl who wants to be a singer and she ends up forming a relationship with this established pop star who is much older than her. She's a high schooler and he kind of has like a very abusive, like predatory relationship with her. It just like evolves throughout the book and you just see her go through like this horrible experience with him. So if that's something that you might be sensitive to, be warned, this book could potentially be very triggering on that front. But I really liked this. It did, I think, a, a really good job of like actually depicting like what it is like to be like groomed by an adult and how the main character of this book doesn't realize like what's happening to her. This was so intensely awful to read and just like disturbing, like deeply disturbing but it just was really well done. I thought it was a great book. I gave this four out of five stars. It was really engrossing, really upsetting, but really powerful at the same time. And yeah, I really appreciated this one. Really, really liked it. And that is it. I believe I have wrapped up 18 books. So hope we got through that in a timely enough fashion. You'll be seeing all my all my full series reviews and then after that we'll be done um, and I can finally do my, my wrap up of 2020. Um, I actually filmed it like months ago. I have like all my statistics done. I really want to share them with you um, but I just like haven't done the wrap ups for the books yet. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Thank you so much for bearing with me. Um, I appreciate you watching this. Um, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys soon. Bye.